Greetings, everyone. Dr. Brian Scott with you. This is Insight to the End Times, and we've been sharing these podcasts uh, over the last two-year period, looking at Bible scriptures to uh, determine as best we can where we might be on God's timetable, because we're coming to the end of the age. And at the same time, we've been looking at a lot of world events. Right at the present time, in the last, well, I don't know, two or three weeks, we have been solely working through Scripture, just looking at the scriptural content of the book of Revelation as to what's going to go on during the seven years of tribulation. I hope you are familiar with that term. If you're not familiar with some of these terms, please go to our website, insighttotheendtimes.com. We have been sharing uh, these podcasts um, for two plus years. The first two years, we shared six days a week, Monday to Saturday, and we shared shorter podcasts, roughly nine and a half minutes in length. Since we entered into our third year at the end of uh, March, we shifted gears and we're now uh, sharing these podcasts three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we are now sharing about a 20 minute podcast in order to convey more information and more clarity to these scriptures as we study together. The world is falling apart. You probably are aware of that. Yet at the same time, we get so used to what's happening in the world that we just take everything for granted and don't pay much attention to what's really, really going on. Uh, I was um, putting gas in my car here in Ontario on uh, Friday evening. This is Wednesday, so a few days ago. Uh, Sorry, this is, yeah, this is Wednesday, isn't it? (laughs) Hallelujah. Um, So here I was gassing my car last Friday evening. And in Canada here, we, we now buy our gas per liter as opposed to per gallon. And uh, I ended up having to pay $1.72 per liter, which is quite an increase over where it was just a few weeks ago. Um, It has just jumped up, way jumped up. So I did some math on the weekend to compare what I'm paying for gas now with when I first had my first vehicle, my first car. And um, uh, it worked out to something like $7.75 a gallon here in Ontario uh, for my gas. Uh, Whereas when I got my very first car in the early 1970s, so that's going back about 50 years ago, I was paying about 42 cents a gallon compared to $7.75. So you can see massive, massive increase in the cost of the gas for my car, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing everywhere else. Everything's gone way, 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 way up in cost. We live with that. We take it for granted. We don't even think about it anymore. Well, I guess that's a good thing. But when it comes to Scripture and when it comes to the end times in the last days, We're taking all these events that are occurring for granted. We're not even looking at their significance as prophetic verses being fulfilled. Jesus said in Matthew 24, you will have great deception in the land. He said it four times in that chapter. He also said, If you study what the conditions were like during the days of Noah, those will be the same kind of conditions just before I come back for the church. We're past the conditions in Noah's day. We are way past them. He said in Luke 17 or 21, I think it was Luke 21, he said, as it was in the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be. We're, past, we're really past that. That's sexual perversion, uh, essentially. We're way, way, way past that. So we're in the last days, really in the last days. We ought to be shouting from the housetops. Jesus is, a, is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon because most people aren't aware of this. So we've been studying together to shout from the housetops. And we've been raising up a lot of these verses for you to see what they're all about. 
Today we're in Revelation chapter 16. We're in the last seven judgments that God is pouring out on the earth. He pours these bowl judgments out, as referred to in Revelation 16, in the last few days of the tribulation period. It's seven years in length. It concludes with the Battle of Armageddon, where Jesus and the saints from heaven have come back to earth, actually come back to earth. Their feet have touched the ground. And in one hour, they completely defeat, destroy the Antichrist, all of his followers, and everyone else who is in league with the Antichrist. Only one hour, last day of the tribulation period. Well, these bold judgments are poured out just as we get closer and closer to that, maybe even in the last couple of days. We looked at the first bold judgment. That was grievous sores. We call them boils. Causes men to be in great torment. The boils are open, sores. They become infected. So it's, it's a torment upon torment upon torment. And it's directed towards all those who, saw, who worship the beast and took the mark of the beast, 666. That has to be second half of the tribulation. That's when it's introduced by the false prophet. Amen. We talked about that this past uh, week on Monday. Let's get into the next one. Praise the Lord. The next bold judgment is in verse number three. Are you ready? Let's get going. Uh, it says, the second angel poured out his uh, bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Whoa, this is heavy duty. Let's talk about this for a minute. The sea becomes blood. If we were to go back to Revelation chapter 8, which refers to the trumpet judgments, the second group of seven judgments, verses 8 and 9 talk about one-third of the sea and the ocean waters are turned into blood, killing one-third of all the sea creatures and one-third of all the ships are destroyed and all the crews on those ships are lost. So the, the second trumpet judgment is one-third of the ocean, one-third of the sea, and essentially according to some Old Testament references, the waters involved are primarily the waters of the Mediterranean Sea and the waters adjacent to the sea, such as the, the Suez Canal, the Red Sea, the Black Sea, all those waters that are adjacent to the Mediterranean where most of the Antichrist activities are occurring, one-third wiped out, and one-third of all the sea creatures wiped out, and one-third of all the ships wiped out. So now we move over into Revelation 16, verse number 3, where the second bold judgment is being poured out. And it says, essentially, here's what it says. The remaining two-thirds of those waters are turned to blood. Because it just says it very clearly, the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea. Well, one-third of those waters have already been turned to blood. Now the remaining two-thirds become blood, and it's the blood of a dead man. It means it's coagulated blood. It is it is stenchy, smelly, uh, horrible smell with this water turning into blood. And all living creatures in the sea die. And all the ships in those waters, they sink. They are destroyed. And all the crews, all the passengers on the cruise ships are destroyed. Um, we are talking about a lot of destruction. And can you imagine? God did this back in the days of Israel, the Hebrews being relieved from or released from Egypt, the Exodus. There's not a new trick for God. This is something he's done before. And you, I just can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. What a, it's just beyond comprehension. All the waters in those waters turn to blood. And that blood being the blood of a dead man? Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, my goodness. So what happens? Two-thirds of all the waters that weren't affected before in the, in the second trumpet judgment are going to be affected here. Third, ready for the third plague? Hallelujah, the third bold judgment. It's very similar to the second one. Verse number four says, the angel, the third angel, poured out his bold judgment on the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. Now, in the earlier uh, situation with the third trumpet judgment, referred to in Revelation chapter 8, verses 10 and 11, those waters became bitter, and those waters were all the fresh waters. The, the streams, the springs, the rivers, fresh water. Amen. Are you here? And uh, they became bitter water, called wormwood. And whoever drank of those waters became really ill or they died because it, they were bitter waters. These waters are turned to blood. Wow, turned to blood. Why? Well, the su subsequent verses here, especially verse number six says, <clears throat> the, the, um, the enemy... They have shed the blood of saints and of prophets. And now God has given them blood to drink, which is their just due. And God says, I've had it. I'm not putting up with this anymore. I'm dealing with it. I'm not putting up with this anymore. This is it. No more. Uh-uh. So uh, imagine... The time sequence here, if it occurs in the last four days as is suggested in the scriptures, reading between the lines type of thing, God's two witnesses have been killed by the Antichrist. That tips the scales. That's deserving of, that's deserving of, that's deserving of these bold judgments, the fiercest judgments of all. And so <clears throat> away we go. We've got all the waters in the sea and what I call ocean waters turning to blood and killing everything in them. And now we've got the fresh waters. They get turned to blood as well. Amen. Now think about this with me for a minute. When an individual has a very severe cut, the blood flows from their body like a, like a gusher. And we're gonna, that's what we're going to see in this situation. And the remaining two-thirds of all these fresh waters are going to be struck by it. Uh, God says the wicked people are going to be forced to drink the blood of these waters, the bloody waters, because they have... To, Stolen the lives of saints and prophets. Amen. Hallelujah. So they're just due, since they shed blood, they're going to have to drink blood. So imagine, whether this be just a short couple of days or whether this be the last month, there will be no water to drink. There will be no water for these forces of evil to drink. They will have to satiate their thirst Quench their thirst by drinking blood. Can you just imagine how gruesome that will be? So, <clears throat> wow. Amen. Um, these two bold judgments, number two and number three, complete the second and third trumpet judgments, the work of turning water to blood and eliminating the water is complete. Wow. Hallelujah. Are you ready for one more? The fourth bold judgment. Let's read it. Revelation 16, verses 8 and 9. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men, with fire. Oh my goodness. 
Verse 9 says, And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent, nor did they give him glory. This fourth bold judgment. Um, wow. The fourth trumpet judgment. Let's compare that for a minute. That is referred to in Revelation chapter 8, verses 12 and 13. That's where a third of the sun, the moon, and the stars are darkened for a third of the... Let me rephrase that. That's where the sun, moon, and stars are darkened for a third of the daylight hours, which is a period of eight hours. So you have darkness occurring in the middle of the day for eight-hour stretch. That normally would be sun, et cetera, et cetera. That causes pandemonium. That causes fear. That causes all kinds of everything going wrong because it's not the way it was. That's the, second, that's the fourth trumpet judgment. So here we have the fourth bold judgment. Isn't it interesting how these parallel? In this fourth bold judgment, the sun is going to scorch people. The heat of the sun is going to scorch people. Wow. Um, with fire. And it's going to be great heat because God has that power because people did not repent of their sins, nor did they give glory to God. Now, we just recently, today is May the 8th, if I'm not mistaken. May the 8th, Wednesday, May the 8th. Let me check that. I want to make sure I got it right. Yeah, May the 8th. Wow. And... Um, Praise the Lord. Uh, we just recently had a f solar eclipse. It occurred just a Monday or two ago. It was quite interesting, exciting, really. Here in southern Ontario, we had ex ex essentially a complete 100% solar eclipse. And um, we were watching it from our home, my wife and I. We had these special little glasses that you wear that look like extreme sunglasses. And when you look at the sun with those glasses on, you can see the glow of the sun, but you don't, uh, you, you don't hurt your eyes. And we watched the sun uh, go, glow, go dark, essentially, as the moon and the sun aligned themselves together. And where we were located... Uh, we got what I would say would be a 99% coverage. And if we had driven just a few, like 15, 20 miles south of our home, it would have been 100%. So we had an extremely thin sliver of sun that was not covered. And as I'm, I'm looking at it with these glasses on, and it's really, it was really amazing. It really was amazing. But if I took the glasses off to look at it, I couldn't, I couldn't look at the sun because it was so bright. It was so bright I could not look at it, and it was just a little sliver. Here, the other thing we noticed is that the temperature dropped about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, about 2 degrees Celsius, as it went dark, and then it came back again, and the temperature rose. The sun is such a powerful powerful, powerful sun. But it's going to be even more powerful according to this plague because this fourth bold judgment is going to scorch men and burn them. It won't be just a sunburn. It's going to be an actual uh, first degree burn. It is going to be absolutely scorching men mankind. It's hard for us to imagine it because it's going to be so intense. And it reminds me, they're going to uh, continue to blaspheme the power of God. They're going to be like the locusts that were released. And when the locusts were released, um, my goodness, man wanted to die. He tried to die for a five-month period and couldn't because they were so intense. This sun is going to burn people. 
So we got them unable to drink because everything's blood. And, 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 and <laughs> we, we've got them sunburnt to the point where they're burnt. These bold judgments are really, are, are really going to be incredible. And that's our first, the second, the third, the fourth. Wow. Hallelujah. Unbelievable. Isn't it? Unbelievable. Praise the Lord. Um, they start off with these sores, boils. Then we have the uh, saltwater waters, seas, and oceans turning completely into blood. And then we have the fresh waters turning completely into blood. And then we have the sun scorching and burning mankind. Um, God's having his way. His wrath is being poured out. It's going to be horrible days if a person's still on this earth, especially those who have the 666 mark and have worshipped the beast. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Later this week on Friday, we'll likely finish up most of the remaining um, bold judgments, at least numbers five and six. Number seven is the granddaddy of them all, the Battle of Armageddon. So I hope you'll join us then. Look forward to seeing you as we close out this week. Thanks for joining us today. Amen. Amen.